Good morning from Osaka, Japan. I hope you all had an amazing Easter. I'm going to show you some highlights of my trip so far, but before I do, let's have a look at Bitcoin. We can see here that we've been stuck in this range since Thursday. And then early yesterday, it did make a breakout finally, which I expected from this week. So we're going to go through that in more detail and talk about what I think is going to happen next. This is definitely fake move week beginning. So let's see what we need to happen next to believe that this move is going to continue to the upside. But before we do that, let me show you some highlights of my trip to Japan so far. For those of you that don't know, I'm currently on holiday in Japan with my daughter. So we're doing a lot of her dream wish list things to do. And I tell you what, these theme parks are slowly killing me, but they are a lot of fun. So let's get into Bitcoin. I want to talk about this area that I had marked out here because this is an area that I had identified and noted to the community last night before it happened as something to potentially watch out for. And I want to show you exactly what I was talking about here. And I'm talking about this center here where I said there's a green hammer there too. This hammer may very well have already liquidated weekend longs as it did spike below the weekend support. And then I said here the moral of the story is that as long as price doesn't return to that green wick marked on my chart I think fake move week beginning may be up. So let's talk about that in detail because what I was talking about there was this hammer right here. And just a side note I do have my camera turned off because the lighting in this hotel room is really terrible. So I'm just going to do a full screen so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But this is the exact hammer that caught my attention last night. And the reason for that is because if you've been watching this channel for a while, then you will know that the weekend usually just ranges sideways after Friday sets a trap. We had some pretty high volatility during the UK session on Friday, which is usually where the trap is initiated. So one thing I always do once a weekend is over is I draw a box from from the end of the US close right down here on Friday to the start of the new week, which is 5 p.m. New York. And I'm basically just drawing where support held for most of that weekend and where resistance was. And this helps me to get an idea of who the market maker trapped on the weekend. So if we have a look at this level here, it becomes very, very obvious where the trap was because the weekend initially had a move to the upside. So people may have taken and long positions there. We came back to retrace, but we held this level of support for the entire weekend. So that gives a lot of people confidence to open long positions in this area because this support is higher than previous price structure and therefore people will remain bullish. Now, once generally retail traders see three touches to a support line, that kind of confirms a support to them. So they'll happily open longs off that area and put their stop loss just below it. And this is why they get trapped because then you see here that you have a hammer that spikes below but immediately closes back up within it. And that spike below stops out everyone who went long on the weekend, which is how the market maker accumulates their contracts. But at the same time, people who have a bearish view would have sell stops just below that support level because they will convince themselves that price is touching on that support a number of times. Therefore, it's getting weaker and if it breaks down they want to get into that move to the downside because they think it will be sharp and fast. So that hammer there, whilst it stops out longs on the weekend, it also triggers short orders. Now wherever the shorts have their stop loss is kind of irrelevant because what happens after that is then they move very fast out of the range and in this case it was to the upside. So this is a, actually a very very typical fake move week beginning that we had. And that's why when I saw this hammer, I notified the community
to watch out for this area because if price doesn't return back below this week, then we may get a W out of that, which should follow with an up move. And that's exactly what happened here where you can see we got this W, then we move through to the upside. So that is at this point in time, fake move week beginning. The other thing to note, however, is where at this point in time price has currently wicked to two, which is the initial high of the day. And the reason that that's a concern is because if we go out to the one hour time frame, you can see here that we've hit this level many, many times. In fact, we've gone even a little bit higher quite a number of times. So this right here, because it hasn't reached back into this zone yet, it's possible that fake move week beginning is over already. And we do have one, two, three hits that level. It's too early to tell just yet, but what usually happens after fake move week beginning is we will find the real three day trend for the beginning of the week will follow and it, usually the reversal will come at a session changeover. So between Asia to UK or UK to US. Now we have another problem with that today and that being that we have a bank holiday in Europe. So that could affect the UK typical behavior and it could also be what caused a session behavior change because this move to the upside happened in Asia today, which is not Asia's typical behavior. Asia's typical behavior is to consolidate usually within about a 2% range at most. So we definitely had something out of the ordinary happen today. Now what we're waiting for is we have to start to look in at this area here. I am on the one hour time frame because we can see after these three hits to the high, we do have a stopping volume candle right there. And when we look in the volume of that stopping volume candle, it's fairly significant compared to these three hits to the high here. So what that means is that currently in this candle right here, this magenta one, we have trapped traders currently. But at the same time, don't forget we trapped traders down here. Now 100 at short, they would already be liquidated, but the market maker may continue price upwards to liquidate the 50x and 25x. That's also a possibility. So what would be the next move today would be there's two hours of UK session to go. So when UK changes over to US, somewhere around there, you want to start to see if the second side of an M formation forms. So this could potentially be the first side. See if price comes back into here, consolidates maybe around here for the next couple of hours. If price cannot return to this magenta candle and close above it, you may end up with an M formation, which would look something like this. And if you get that, then that means means that the fake move week beginning is over and that will confirm that this move to the upside was the fake move week beginning. If however US continues the trend, which is also very, very possible, then what that means is that the stop hunt that we identified on the 15 minute time frame that was fake move week beginning. So we know that there's a false move that begins the week and is designed to trap traders by triggering pending orders and also stop out traders who are right. They got it right, but their stop loss is too tight. So that may have already been done and the damage may have been done in this very one candle and we are now going to have continuation to the upside. So I'm actually going to bring that in a bit tighter now that I see where it is on the 15 minute time frame. So the only way you're going to know that if you caught that long, if you're in our community, then what you can identify after the W is we look for three rises. And what's clear to me is usually within three rises on a smaller time frame, you'll also see three hits. So this right here would count as one rise to me and I can see the three green candles. So three high volume candles count as one, two, three hits within level one rise. There's a board meeting consolidation right there. Then we had another three high volume candles, one, two, three there. That creates rise level two. So it is possible that there is another rise coming when we count it that way. The only reason that we may not get the third is because we have the stopping volume candle right here. And that's what is making me cautious to say that I think we're going to continue up from here. I really want to see what happens in this trap trader zone. So, you know, we see this one red candle here that's attempting the zone. It's pretty weak. The current candle is trying to recover that wick there. So if we get back into the zone, it's fine if we enter it, but we want to see a lot of wicks at the top of the candles to give us a hint that it can't get any higher and we don't want to see it break 
make the top wick of this red candle. That's what's going to give us the hint that this is going down from here. However, if we continue up, then we're going to break that level and you'll just stay in your long position because currently if you are long, if you did get this W formation breakout, we have maintained price above the 50 EMA the entire time so far. So there's actually no reason to exit the long position yet because price is above the 50 EMA. So that's another thing to watch out for as well. And there's a couple of hours to go, so I won't go on too long because I do want to get this video out before US opens. But those are two things I'm looking for. I'm open to there only being two levels in the fake move week beginning with the stopping volume candle and put possible reversal come US or around maybe end of UK US session. But I'm also at this point in time open to more upside for as long as we stay above the 50 EMA or we don't break it with a high amount of volume. Now, if I go out to the higher time frame, let me show you what that will mean. I do have a lot on this chart, I apologize. But what that will mean is we've had multiple touches here to this resistance level. We've had multiple touches down here. Now, this is something I drew out a lot more clearly on my Twitter on the weekend down here. This is what it actually looks like. So this is on the four hour time frame. multiple touches here, multiple touches here. When you have an ascending triangle like this, you need to be prepared after, usually after three touches, but in this case, we've had four. You need to be prepared from this point on for a lower high to form within the triangle. That will be your hint that we're gonna break to the downside or a higher low to form within the triangle, which will be your hint that we're gonna break to the upside. We have a significantly high liquidation level at 29,000. It does make sense for them to come for that before they issue any sort of reversal but you know sometimes things just don't make sense we also have liquidation levels below the triangle so that could be a stop hunt that takes us down there takes that one out but this one here at 29k is the significant one and I did think we would get there before any type of reversal so I'm still open to that and also the 25,400 has a very significant liquidation level and it also had heat map orders for almost a week now so I'm going to have a look and see if those heat map orders are still there. So this is on Binance USDT futures and they are still there. So we've got 1.3k orders at 25,400 and look how long this line is. It starts all the way back on the 31st of March. So there have been fairly significant orders at that level for quite some time now. And when we go closer to where price is right now, there's not really anything significant holding price up or down at this point in time. We've got 28,200 kind of flashing on and off as a buy zone and we've got a short zone at 28,700. So when we transfer that back to the chart now, they're really not significant enough those levels to move price. I just want to be clear about that, but it is the highest that we have. So when we transfer that back to a chart, we can see here that the buy orders are at the current kind of support after this last break. We came back, we retested this level and it looks like there are still buyers willing to buy at that 28,200. Now, if we get there another time, that may be the thing that gives us that rise level three that I feel like I'm currently missing, but open to it not happening at all. But that would be interesting to see if that happens. And if it does, then that may give us the rise level three to the 28,700. Still would feel odd to me if that's all we got and we reverse from there that they didn't come for the 29,000 liquidity. But, you know, that can happen at times. So definitely going to keep open to that. Unfortunately, there's just no not enough on the heat maps to make me really think where a reversal is going to happen or where the next move to the upside is going to happen. It's just very, very light. And you know what? Because of that, I'm actually going to have a look at OKX futures because lately there has been a significant amount of trading happening on OKX, which finally, I'm glad everyone's jumping on board because OKX is the best exchange to trade on, in my opinion. If you are looking for an exchange to trade on, OKX is my preferred exchange. Exchange. So if you're interested, check them out. If you like what you see, use the link in the description of this video to get 15% discount off your trading fees for life. And you know what? Those discounts, they definitely add up. So when I have a look at OKX, again, see, I don't see any significant numbers above price to short. This 28,000, it's really nothing in comparison, but it's all I have to go off. And that's at 29,050. Now that will hit that liquidation level. So yep, definitely keen for that. Below price, there are definitely a hell of a lot more buyers 
then there are people wanting to short these things. So look at these here. We've got 139k at 27,750 and also 27,650, which would mean price would have to come all the way back down to the bottom of the triangle. Now, if I zoom out on that to show you exactly why those orders are there, it kind of makes perfect sense. That there is the triangle. And if price were to come back to this area here, that's going to be around that 27,700 kind of mark. So I'm not too sure about price coming all the way back there. But however, if it did, it would still create another touch to that trend line. And if it bounced at that point, then I would definitely think we're going to go up and break out. But the other thing to note about that is that could be a few days away. So it is possible on a lower time frame that we create the M because this is four hours. So that's going to take days for it to happen. We could create an M on a 15 minute time frame, retrace level two, retrace level three, hit that area, then shoot out to the upside. And that could be the week's play and it could be something that happens out of all of these news events that we've got going on. Just to give you a heads up, we've got CPI on Wednesday, we've got FOMC meeting minutes on Thursday, we've got core PPI on Thursday, unemployment claims as well, retail sales. So we've got a jam-packed news week and any one of those could cause the midweek reversal once the actual start of the week trend is chosen. So anyway, that's just a trade idea for now. But what's more important is trying to get the start of the week swing. So I'm going to end this video here. I just want you to keep that stuff in mind. This is the trap trader zone. Wait to see if price can re-enter that zone. If it looks weak there, then this move to the outside is probably over. Would we'll likely create the M formation and head to the downside. However, there's no reason to exit longs at this point in time until you see that weakness within the trap trader zone. I hope this video was helpful. If you are wanting to learn this method in full, consider joining us. The link to the website is in the description of this video, as well as the link for OKX. I will try to make it tomorrow. I am in transit tomorrow from where we're going from Osaka to Mount Fuji, but I will do my best to do a video update for you when I have settled in. Have an amazing evening and see you guys soon.